Welcome to Flame, the kitchen in which we ignite love and peace. And today we're welcoming a guest, Jasu Ben, who is from the uh, Brahma Kumari's Bulawayo Centre in Zimbabwe. Welcome, Jasu Ben. So Thank lovely you, to have you with us. And uh, yeah, you can subscribe to this program. Uh, in which we demonstrate a huge variety of excellent vegetarian and vegan dishes. Uh, so what are you going to cook for us today, Jasu Ben? Good morning to my viewers. Good morning and thank you, Shuna and all. Um, today we're going to have a sweet potato sandwich, which is very, very simple, easy, light, and uh, I'm sure you'll enjoy it. Sounds very interesting. And so what we have in front of us are some sweet potatoes. Uh, and you're going, yes, yeah. you can please do this demonstrate. First of all, we take the sweet potato, we'll, we'll make little pieces, chop them up very beautifully uh, to make the sandwich, which is very easy also, just like that. So the ingredients that we have today are with us are gr uh, green uh, coriander, peanut powder, green chili, ginger, salt, and a little bit of hing. And together with that will be some uh, uh, turmeric, I mean, not turmeric, but uh, uh, dhania powder and jiru powder. And so for those who are familiar with those terms, uh, the dhania is coriander and the jiru is cumin. And of course this uh, hing is uh, sometimes known as asafoetida. And that gives uh, a quite a good flavor to, to many dishes. Uh, and so, uh, Jasubin, I'm going to invite um, Sister Patience to ask you a little bit about yourself and uh, your philosophy towards food. Welcome, Patience. Greetings, Jasubin. It's good to see you. It's good to talk to you. Thanks, Patience. Thank you. So now we live in a world where things are changing. People are becoming more vegan, more vegetarian. What advice would you give to someone who's starting out? Okay, for myself, I would say that uh, uh, when I was non-veg as well, but I always had this thought of being vegetarian, but it seemed impossible. But when I started with Brahma Kumaris and I started meditating, within a week, uh, I felt uh, for myself, from inside my heart, uh, that I should be vegetarian. And this gave me a lot of boost because I, I used to have a lot of problems with um, digestion, uncomfortable feeling in the body. And I found that once I had become vegetarian, it made my life so much easier, it was more comfortable, it was more light, and I felt more energetic. Mm -hmm. So you get it everyone, if you're starting out on this journey, there are good health tips from her. She said that it was good for well-being it was good for just because she used to be sick before but now it's good and she's more energetic and now for people who are in an environment where they're surrounded by people eat meat and they they only eat vegetables what would what advice would you give to those people around them not to them but to those people around them okay for me it was very easy because although my whole family was uh, non-vegetarian, but I felt uh, that uh, I think that just the power of pure thoughts, uh, uh, even they, they appreciated, and they would say to me, oh, it's okay, you can just do what you have to do and we'll do what we have to do. And yeah, I remember my dad also, he said, oh, don't worry about, you know, um, um, about us, uh, you, as long as you're comfortable, you're fine, it will help you and it, it you know. And later I found that even other one or two sisters of mine and my dad and others became vegetarian very easily. And you've been, uh, you've been meditating for a few decades now. How has that gone hand in hand with your cooking? Of course, the more we cook in uh, the remembrance of God and you know we have positive thoughts uh, that we vibrate, uh, which also has an effect on the food and whatever we eat, uh, it 
the effect of the food is on the mind and the mind and the body as well. So, and even it affects the people who are eating that food because the positive vibrations helps them in their life as well. Okay, so any advice to everyone out there who's vegan and who's non-vegan before we commence to cooking? Oh, I'm sure you all enjoy being vegetarian and there's a lot of variety in vegetarian before we used to think that there isn't, but there is so much things we can, uh, you know, have vegetarian and uh, I think you'll be, very, it, you'll be happy with your life also. All right. Thank you so much, Sister Jasu. We would be happy to see how you do this whole dish for us. Thank you. So at the moment we just saw that we started with chopping the sweet potatoes in a nice little shape. Which you wash, when they wash too nicely, you just have to slice them for the... And so that's uh, like about a centimeter thick. Yes, very, very small, not very thick. Then we just... Uh, what we need to do is make our little paste, which is uh, the uh, green coriander, uh, dania, green coriander. And we put some of this peanut powder inside. And so you said uh, you roasted these peanuts the pe a little beforehand because that brings out the, the flavor, flavor of the and peanuts. the taste as well. Mm -hmm. And then a little bit of ginger powder, very little you need, you don't need so much. So grated ginger. Okay. And then uh, maybe a bit of... Uh, Chili powder also, one teaspoon is more than enough. So but it depends on how sweet, how chili you like. Uh -huh. If it's stronger, then it's fine, that's all. Then you just need the, the dania powder, which is about three two teaspoons. To three teaspoons. Two, and the, the cumin powder. Okay, and about, again, two, two, two te te teaspoons. teaspoons. Then we just need to put a little bit of oil, very little. We're not, we, we're very healthy and uh, we're not using too much oil. It's not too, just to make a little paste. And you can use your hands to make the paste. And we're just putting a little bit of water just to, very little bit of water just to make the paste bind it. And that's it done. That's your, and a little bit of the, sorry, of the salt uh, we'll need uh, just to, so the salt is again to, to your taste because nowadays a lot of people so have pressure and, and of course teaspoons. they're going to use very little salt. A little bit of this uh, hing, very little. And then we just do the paste. So now that you're using, uh, mixing this paste with your hands, are you going to have chili on your hands? And how are you going to manage that? Uh, you can use a spoon, that's fine, mm -hmm. but I, it, I'm using the hands because I'm going to need to even use. make the paste, mm. the sandwich of the paste. Yeah. So what we do is we just take one like that and then you just make a little bit dough there. Very simple and easy, nothing much, just look tasty. Remember that you're a soul and in the consciousness, the awareness of the Supreme Being, who's peace, love and happiness. So that you share that peace and love and happiness inside also. And so how do you remind yourself to have that consciousness whilst you're cooking? Or has it become automatic with it's you It's become automatic because we've been practicing meditation. And when you use that meditation in our day-to-day -day life, which is why it helps us so much. And uh, these vibrations also of that, uh, whatever thoughts that we are creating goes inside. With a lot of positivity. Mm -hmm. And I remember Daddy Junkie uh, once saying to somebody who asked her about her family, because you were talking about family and uh, family who might not be vegetarian, um, and how you manage them. And uh, this uh, person had asked uh, Daddy Junkie, well, what, what do I do about my family? And uh, Daddy had said, as long as you cook in remembrance and you offer uh, to God. Um, now, when uh, we have uh, this practice of offering to God, what is happening at that time? Again, it's just uh, remembering, uh, having positive vibrant thoughts and those positive thoughts go into the remembrance of offering also. And uh, that also gives it strength and power to the food. And then the food also becomes so pure and energetic. And so sometimes even I found that when, like when I never used to like cabbage, it was something that I never enjoyed. 
and yet uh, when I started cooking it in the, uh, God's remembrance and then prepared it and ate it, now I enjoy eating it also. Okay. And then uh, karmically, if it's been offered to God, then it uh, rightfully belongs to God. And so anyone who eats it is eating from the hand of God and not your hand. So there's basically no karmic account. Is that correct? No, mean, meaning that, of course, uh, uh, we are instruments for God only. And as much as possible, we try to remember the Supreme Being and in his, uh, in his remembrance with the power of peace, love and happiness, of course, uh, it will be purified as well. So here we go, we've just about done with the... And so you'll notice too that there's very little waste or no waste at all. That is also part of the consciousness of the cooking of uh, Brahma Kumaris is that uh, cook what we can eat there's no wastage, um, we're very careful not even to waste water or anything like that. Uh, so a great respect for the environment and what it provides us with. Okay, so that's all oh, done. Wow, perfect, look at that. Measurements were absolutely accurate. And now, it's very simple, we have some boiling steaming water here and we can just uh, put it in there so that it becomes really easy and uh, we'll just steam it uh, and the steaming doesn't take very long 10 to 15 minutes just depending on your on the heat and the, the pot you put it in it's very low but it's okay small ones <laughs> they're very happy to have little things and in case uh, you have leftover, it's also mm -hmm. fine because it will boil and you can still have it. Uh, when you invited us to come and eat with you, and I had uh, my youngest child with me, and you called me quietly into the kitchen and asked me what he would eat uh, because you didn't want to embarrass him by giving him something that he wouldn't eat, he wouldn't be comfortable <laughs> eating. And you so kindly made some chips and roti for him, which he loved for the rest of his life. <laughs> that was his good fortune, and I, I, I was happy to know that at least he enjoyed it, because I could see on the table that he wasn't comfortable with the, food, the other food. Mm. And so simple things help, uh, which they like. If you prepare for them, they also feel happy. And so now tell us a little bit about the sweet potato dish. Would you eat it for breakfast, for lunch, for supper, or okay. any time? It's, it's an interesting sandwich that we made it's because you can have it as a breakfast dish, you can have it as a lunch. If, if you want to eat it in the evening for a dinner also, you can have a soup with it, whether it's butternut soup or vegetable soup, you can have it with it and it's very comfortable and you know, also light, it's not heavy. Also, if you like it for breakfast and you want to have a nice good breakfast like a kingly breakfast, you can make your, uh, your potato sandwich and then you take your little rolls mm -hmm. and you just slice the roll and make it put it inside and it will look like a burger you can put a little tomato if you want and a little lettuce if you like and you can with butter inside and of course you can have it as a sandwich as well which okay. is very interesting mm. and tasty with your tea coffee whatever amazing. you're having and uh, so if say you had a bit of left uh, some that were left over and weren't hot uh, how would you reheat it Okay, if you find that you like boiled food, it's fine, it's steamed, you like, you can enjoy it. If you feel you want to roast it after it's cold, what we do is just take a little bit of uh, oil in a pan, a non-stick pan maybe, or even a normal pan, put a little bit of oil inside, and then you can put your sandwich and turn it both sides and make it a little golden brown, and it's also very tasty. Oh, okay, so uh, it's a versatile uh, dish. This is a fantastic dish. Very simple, dish. very easy, very quick, yeah. and yet... And I Enjoyable. Think what's, what's really nice Delicious. about it is that so often people put a sweet sauce or something like that with um, sweet potato uh, and this is really savory and just will bring out the flavor of the sweet potato through the use of ginger, chili, uh, a few powder. spices, the peanut powder which goes of course very well. I mean, throughout Africa there are sweet potatoes and peanuts. 
So it's um, a it's very good dish to know for Africa. Something we all keep mm. in the house, so it, yeah. I think it's just easy. Now that we're ready, we'll just have a look at it. You just need to take a little knife and just put it inside just to make sure it's cooked well. And I think it's okay, it's now ready. So it's just been in for a little over 10 minutes. Just over 10 minutes. Yeah. Then you just need to take it out very nicely. And uh, here we have the finished dish. Um, it's uh, sweet potato is now soft. Uh, we've used a garnish of fresh coriander leaves. And yes, ready to eat. Thank you so much, Jasu Ben. Thank you, Shannon. Thank you all. Bye.